Welcome to Energy Talks, a regular podcast series with expert discussions on power system testing topics. My name is Scott Williams from the podcast team at Omicron, and I will be your host. Hello, everyone. In this episode of Energy Talks, Omicron field testing expert Marcus Stenner talks about his practical experience working with field engineers in the area of instrument transformer testing. Marcus will discuss how and when instrument transformer testing is performed and which measurements and tools he recommends. He will also share his practical knowledge about best practices when performing tests on instrument transformers in the field. Hello, Marcus. Welcome to Energy Talks. Hey, Scott. How are you? Nice to be here. Thank you again for being here for this episode. Marcus, could you please tell us about your job at Omicron and how your daily work is similar to the work of testing engineers in the field? Yeah, since um, 2004, I have been working for Omicron as a commissioning engineer all over the world, not only in Germany, but also in China and the Emirates. Since 2017, I'm also a member of the Omicron product management team to contribute my field insights to the different development teams. I have several years of testing experiences in different substations, working closely with the customer on various critical assets. I really like uh, being outside and my hands-on mentality is really uh, valuable for my work with our customers. I help them with asset commissioning and testing, but also solving problems. So I know what it is like to work in the shoes of our customers. Okay. Well, this particular episode has to do with instrument transformer testing. Marcus, what practical experience do you have with instrument transformer testing in the field? Yeah, normally when we are doing um, um, instrument transformer testing um, uh, or when when we are commissioning a substation, we have to do um, instrument transformer testing. So every time when we are working in the field, we have to do it. Very good. Marcus, just to clarify, could you describe the difference between instrument transformer, current transformer, and voltage transformer? How are they related? Yeah, instruments transformer includes current transformers and voltage transformer. Um, The current transformer is... um, is um, to to convert the high current um, in the um, in in the field to um, measured values for the secondary devices, and the same um, the voltage transformer is a potential transformer. It transforms the high potential of exam for example one hundred ten kilovolt to one hundred volt in the secondary circuits. When are instrument transformer tests normally performed? Uh, We perform um, instrument transformer tests normally when we're commissioning a new substation or bay, or um, when uh, we have a replacement of instrument transformers in the substation, if the ratio of the instrument transformers is changed. After changes in the secondary um, wiring circuits, um, when, for example, when we change the secondary cables or when the new protection device or meter is installed, to prove the measure, measuring accuracy of measuring and counting instrument transformers, mm-hmm. or after high current faults, to ensure that the uh, instrument transformers has not been damaged, and the and to demagnetize the instrument transformers before the bay will be switched on again. Okay, how do you know which tests should be carried out? Uh, this often happens in the consultation with the customer who often have a specification in their test guidelines and test reports. If the customer does not make any um, specifications, we fall back on the national guidelines. This usually includes the fulling tests for the current transformers. Um, therefore, we, we measure the insulation resistance core to core and all cores to earth. Um, we test unbalanced. We we do some tests for unbalanced feeding of the secondary values. For example, 100, 200, 300 milliamps to mm-hmm. check the phase assignment and the check and to check um, uh, all the secondary circuits of the instrument transformers are closed. Uh, the measurement of the connected burden in order to rule out over or under burden or the ratio and the polarity can be measured through a primary injection. At the primary injection, it's important that all secondary circuits are short circuit or connected with the burden. 
some customers also want to have the measurement of the magnetization characteristic to ensure uh, the correct core assignment. Okay. Marcus, which test equipment do you use for the various measurements on the current transformer, for example? Yeah, during testing of current transformers, depending on the customer wishes and guidelines, different testing devices are used. In order to make the test results comparable, we try to carry out the tests as the customer does and enter the results in the corresponding measurement reports. I like to use uh, Metriso 5000 um, for, uh, of course, meter uh, watt uh, to measure the um, insulation of, of the cores. To perform um, the wiring check, I usually use the CMC. Uh, with the CMC, it's quite easy to inject the secondary values because I can change the values into three phases of the secondary system here and, com can, and compare them directly on the display of the protection device, for example. When measuring the ratio and the polarity, I use the CPC 100 or the CT analyzer, depending on the customer's requirements. I like to use a battery powered compano for customers for the medium and low voltage um, level, as it can often happens in the voltage levels um, that there is uh, still no main voltage in the systems when the commissioning starts. Okay. How large is the current you select for the primary feed? Um, depending which test device is available to me, I try to inject the nominal current of uh, the instrument transformers. With the larger rati ratios, it's important to me to achieve at least a quarter of the nominal current, since the ratio errors are not longer as large here. Do you have measurement devices you like better than others? In principle, all devices that um, I test with, uh, with are always suitable for the measurement, but I find the CT analyzer very convenient um, for testing current transformers. What are the advantages and disadvantages of the CT analyzer for you? From my point of view, the advantages of the CT analyzers um, are um, in the uh, weight of 8 kilograms. He scored the CPC about 29 kilogram. With a um, and second, with a, a little wiring effort, all instrument transformer parameters are measured and automatically evaluated in a short time. Approximately one core is measured in about five minutes. And I see the require. Uh, I have to see the requirements of some customers to complete the test using primary injection as a disadvantage, um, which can only be carried out with the CPC one hundred or the Compano one hundred. Now we know more about the testing of current transformers. Thank you for that, Marcos. But what tests are typically performed on voltage transformers? Um, the measurement on voltage transformers um, basically includes the same measurements, such as uh, measurement of insulation resistance, core to core and all cores to, uh, to earth. Asymmetrical injection of the secondary values. Here it's not currents, it's voltage. It's 10, 20, 30 volts to check the phase assignment and to check uh, whether all secondary circuits of the instrument transform are closed. Measurement of, um, of the CT burden in order to rule out over or under burden. Um, and it's very important um, to check the ratio and the polarity. Um, measured by primary injection. Okay. Similar to the CT analyzer, the uh, Votano 100 also offers an automated test procedure and automatic evaluation of the results for the voltage transformers. Um, depending on the customer's uh, wishes um, and the configuration of the system, I also use the CPC 100 here. When testing the voltage transformers, I don't just check um, the individual um, transformer poles. I also look at the entire system with a 230 volt AC primary injection test. Voltage transformers, uh, voltage transformer circuits have this special feature that the DA, the N winding in the secondary circuits are connected uh, to another in series. However, since uh, instrument transformers manufacturers always earth all the taps of um, a winding on delivery, there's a risk that two windings will short circuit via the earth connection if the windings are connected in, in, in series in the system. Okay. 
where exactly is the danger here? Yeah, the secondary circuits um, of the voltage transformers must never be operated with a short circuit. Otherwise, the instrument's transformer will be thermally destroyed within a few seconds during the first energization after commissioning. Yeah, at the open delta winding, the voltage should be equal to zero volts. If there's a short circuit in the open delta winding, a voltage can be measured. The test should now be stopped and the error searched for. Okay, so Marcus, how can I rule out a short circuit in the secondary circuit of the voltage transformer? Yeah, to rule out um, a short circuit in the secondary uh, circuit of the voltage transformers, I typically, um, if, uh, at first, I, I have a um, visual inspection according to the circuit diagram. Uh, I take some pictures and then I make sure that um, um, the system is connected in, in, in uh, according to the diagrams. Mm -hmm. um, at the second point, I try to make a three-phase um, 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 230 volt injection. Um, I mentioned this test already. Um, and this test requires a three-phase test device, for example, the CMC, which is connected to the primary side of the voltage transformer. With this, with its voltage outputs, with the symmetrical supply of um, 230 volt and the respective phase angle of 120 degrees to each. Other, the voltage values are measured and compared according to the transformer ratio. Okay, well, this brings up a good point. What should I pay particular attention to when performing measurements on voltage and current transformers? Yeah, in the case of outdoor systems, um, care must be taken to ensure the weather conditions are good. If it is raining, um, you should refrain from measuring. Um, since the moisture effects of the measurement uh, e.g. of the insulation resistance. With every injection of voltage or current um, into the secondary um, circuits, the instruments, instrument transformer system, all other persons which are working in the which are working in the system should be informed um, to be avoid um, an accident by touching the energized circuits. And it's very important when we when we're feeding into the primary side of the instruments from transformer, care should be taken to ensure that the working area is set up in accordance with the five safety rules. When testing the current transformer, one side of the current transformer can always be remained grounded during the um, measurement. When we are measuring the voltage transform, it looks a bit difficult. The earth for the uh, the earth for working must not be removed. Um, when the stranding is connected, since dangerous voltage can be coupled in, um, if if the test is to be carried out anyway, the stranding or cable must be separated together with the um, earth for working from the head of the voltage transformer. Marcus, you mentioned setting up working areas according to the five safety rules. What are the five safety rules? Yeah, when I'm working in in the um, in the substation, I have to um, uh, work according to the five safety rules. And the first point of that of this five safety rules is um, disconnect completely, meaning that the um, electrical installation must be disconnected from live parts on all poles. The second point is securing against reconnection, um, and the third one is verifying that the insulation is dead. So I have to measure if there's any voltage on the system. Um, the fourth point is, um, or the fourth rule is carry out earthing and short circuit. And the fifth, and the fifth rule is, and the fifth rule is um, provide protection against adjacent life parts. Okay, thank you for that. Marcus, is there anything that should be paid attention to after the measurement is completed? Yeah, if the measurement is completed and uh, we're close before energizing, it is important that all connections that have been um, changed or opened for the test are restored according to the circuit diagram. Um, in particular, it must be ensured that the secondary circuits of um, current transformers are closed again, as this can cause damage um, if the um, transformer secondary circuit is operated open. Okay. Marcus, if there is one particular tip you have in the, for field testing of instrument transformers, what would that be? Yeah, for me, it's very important to be prepared for the jobs to be done in the substation. Um, that means that the test equipment, um, devices and cables 
should be in a good condition and calibrated. Um, yeah, and then it's very important that you have a workflow and that you follow that workflow um, to be fo and that you are focused on the actual test um, you are performing. All um, all disturbances uh, during the test can lead to wrong test results or more worse uh, to accidents. Okay. Marcos, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and practical experiences with instrument transformer testing in this episode of Energy Talks. Yeah, thank you very much and stay safe and hopefully um, I see you um, in one of your substations. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, again, for joining us for this discussion. And a big thank you to our audience for listening to this episode of Energy Talks. We would really like to know what you think about our podcast and which topics you would like to hear more about in the future. Also, if you have questions about a particular episode for our guest experts, please let us know. To do this, simply send us an email to podcast at omicronenergy.com. We greatly appreciate your questions and feedback. Omicron has several years of experience in power system testing and offers you the matching solution for your application. This also includes instrument transformer testing, which was featured in this episode. For more information, be sure to visit our website at omicronenergy.com. There you can also find out more about webinars and courses offered by Omicron Academy. Simply look under Training. Please join us to listen to the next episode of Energy Talks. Goodbye for now, everyone. Mm -hmm.